And now to a story about history and change. Montgomery, Alabama is a city of monuments and markers of its conflicted past, the Confederacy, segregation, and the Civil Rights Movement. Jeffrey Brown looks at a project to rebuild downtown while maintaining a sense of its heritage. It's part of his ongoing series, Culture at Risk. Colored and white. Inscribed on two stones that once stood over segregated water fountains in a crest department store in the heart of downtown Montgomery, Alabama, where everyone knew their place. You knew exactly where you could and, and could not go. Valda Harris exactly Montgomery used to go to Cress as a young girl. It was just the unfairness and the um, inequality that you, you sensed that was so strong. You could sense that, that you're not welcome. I think it is a vestige of truth. Now those old stones are part of an effort by New York-based entrepreneur Sarah Beatty Buller to revitalize a building and downtown that had fallen on hard times. It really started very pragmatically with, wow, those are some spectacular buildings and they're not really being loved. <laughs> do you think that we could do something maybe about um, buying those buildings and helping to restore them? But then it went further. Buller and her husband Mark have spent the last five plus years renovating this building. The goal to create new commercial space that turns a profit and preserves a sense of sometimes painful history. I don't want to recreate a time in history um, that isn't a very proud one. Um, I do also think that I have a responsibility to show a vestige of history so that people understand that that had an impact for how people behaved and how they connected, so that we can come up with something that's better. In Montgomery, as in other cities, street names and neighborhoods were markers of racial divisions. Dexter Avenue was a largely white shopping area. When businesses and people began to move to the suburbs in the 1960s and 70s, many buildings were left in disrepair, paint peeling, windows boarded up. The Crest Building was one of them. It was originally built in 1898, restored in 1929 after a fire, and finally shuttered in 1981. A so-called five and dime store, it was a destination for Montgomery shoppers. But the block-wide Crest also opened onto Monroe Street, a once bustling black business area. Downtown Montgomery was a lot of fun because you could buy your popcorn. You had a dollar or so, you could really spend it mm -hmm. on just junk. Valda Harris Montgomery's father and grandfather owned and ran a drugstore for decades on Monroe Street. This is a recreation, pretty much. The, Her um, father later the moved the lunch counter from the store into their family home. There were many good memories, she told us, but she also witnessed the segregation imposed at Crest and other stores. Separate dining areas, restrooms, even a separate staircase that led to the African-American shopping area downstairs. So these, the steps we're talking about. In the restoration, Buller kept some of these features, but in a new context. We really decided that adding this quote, the time is always right to do what is right, by Martin Luther King Jr. could be a reminder to all of us. If we took them out of this space, it would almost be like pretending this never happened. It would be wiping it away. And um, that was not our, we were not, that was not my place to do that. Buller reached out to local residents, including Montgomery, for input. When we were doing a, uh, a brainstorming session in the building and she spoke of the, the water fountains, it was, um, a little visceral feeling there yeah. of discomfort. And I said, things came, back. Things came, back, came back quickly. But so but, what's the value in, 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 in keeping them, well, restoring but them? after, at, this was in the beginning, yeah. after she's had the grand opening, and you saw the younger people that come down that are really interested in learning the history because they've only read about this. Yeah. They grew up in, seg in uh, integrated times. And how so many of the young whites that are coming in that are wanting to learn about this history as well. I think it's going to be um, very, very, very beneficial. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So does Michelle Browder. Take me to the water. Y'all know that one? She runs a tour company, More Than Tours, and was one of the first business owners to move into the new Crest Building, where her store is filled with art and artifacts from Montgomery's past. 
when I was shown the stones, the colored in white only water fountain sign, it was a no brainer. I had to be here. Why? It just reminds us of the battle and the struggles that we have to continue to fight uh, for equality and for equal justice. And uh, so basically I thought it was important to be the keepers of the stone. You know, I just thought that narrative needs to be told. She's also part of a new generation of African-American entrepreneurs and takes inspiration from being on the same street where black-owned businesses once thrived. For so long, you know, we're, we're, we've been groomed to go to college to work for someone else. No, we can own our own. There are people that are smart enough here to be able to do that and offer a product that works. The legacy Browder looks to is on display throughout the new Crest building. As part of the Remembering Monroe Street project, residents brought in photographs of the historic block. And downstairs, there's a space to record and share memories of the store and neighborhood. There's also an art studio containing works from Alabama artists, including Bill Trailer, a self-taught illustrator born into slavery who gained fame drawing on Monroe Street. There's plenty of space for new businesses, and two floors above are 23 luxury apartments, all quickly rented for $900 to $1,200 a month. She has tour groups coming. This is, remember, a business, one created by outsiders. I think for us, especially because we don't live here, to make sure that we could um, link arms with people in the local community who had um, and understood that our visions were aligned for what we wanted. and. What we all did share was an interest in um, really trying to bring um, downtown <laughs> Montgomery back. Making money while doing this. There's no, no have, shame in that. Uh, there's so no shame in that. I hope that every single square foot is rented, <laughs> <laughs> is leased, and it's a combination of local businesses and multinational businesses involved with um, conversations as it relates to their customers um, and social justice. It's a big idea, combining history and profit, old stones and new money. Buller and her husband have purchased several other buildings nearby, some in very raw condition. They plan to renovate them just as with Cress. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Montgomery, Alabama.